Unlike the method that uses the default crafting table which I showed before, this method I'll go over today lets you use your custom items in your crafting recipes, not just as the result. So for this tutorial, you can use command blocks if you want, but I'll be using a data pack. I also recommend that you use data packs because they are more organized and easier to share. Make sure to check out my video on creating data packs if you don't know how to. So the main thing you need before making a custom crafting table with this method, whether or not you use the custom block method I showed before, is some type of entity such as an armor stand, which has an entity tag, and is sitting inside of another block which has an inventory, such as a dropper. You're using the armor stand with the tag in order to detect the location of the crafting table with your commands, and you're using the block with the inventory in order to actually detect the recipe and give the results to the player. Okay, so to actually create the tagged entity and inventory block, you could create a simple function with just two commands in it. So I'm just going to call this summon.mc function because we'll use it to actually summon in our custom crafter. And this is basically a very simplified version of what I did in my custom block video, so make sure to go check that out if you want more details on custom blocks in general. But just for the bare basics of the custom crafter, what we need is the summon command to summon in the armor stand or whatever tagged entity you're using in order to hold the tag that you could use to detect later on in your commands. So then I'll include tags and I'm just going to call it crafter. So the armor stand is going to have a tag which I could recognize later on to get the location of the crafter. And just to make sure it's aligned in the center of the block, what I'm going to do is execute and then align x y no x z and then positioned just offset a little bit on the x and the z axis this is just to make sure that the armor stand is actually in the center of the block then i will run the summon command so once i have the tagged entity summoned what i'll do is a set block command and i'll just set a dropper at the position of the custom crafter so wherever i run the summon command it's going to place down the things i need for the custom crafter to work so now if I go in here and I reload and run the function, so crafter summon. So as you can see, now I have the armor stand directly in the center of my dropper. And this is basically all you need in order to get it working. If you want to give your custom crafting table a special model so that it doesn't just look like a dropper or whatever you used, go to mcstacker.net and add a section here for an item on top of the armor stand's head with the custom model data of your model. And if you want further details or examples of that, make sure you go check out the custom blocks video. But if you're fine with your dropper or if you're going to use a default item to just stick out the top and make it look a little different, then you could probably figure that out on MC Stacker. And now for the actual dropper section, you can change the name of it so that it doesn't just say dropper when you open it up. And you could just go again to mcstacker.net and just add the NVT on the dropper so that it'll have a custom name to whatever you want it to be. You can invoke this function in many ways, so I can't go over all of them. However, a few examples are by throwing an item onto a block, or detecting if a player shifts on top of a special block like a crafting table, or by making a placeable custom block according to my other custom block tutorial. So now that we have the command to actually summon our crafting table into the world, what we could do is work on the detection for the recipe. So inside of VS Code, or if you're using command blocks, you could also do the same thing, but it might be a bit weird. But I'll just first create a new function which will run on my crafter. I'll just call it crafter.mc function. And then inside of loop, I want to make sure I run it on all of our tagged armor stands because that indicates where our crafting tables are. Because if you remember in the summon command, we had the tag called crafter. So I want to detect that inside of loop. So I'll do execute and then as all entities and then tag equals crafter. And then I'll do at at s to make sure I run at the position of the crafter. And then I want to run the function crafter and crafter. This is just my namespace and this is the name of the function which we're going to use. And just to make sure it's working, I'll put a say hi command inside of crafter. And if I test it, it should be spamming hi. As you can see, it spams hi. And if I destroy this armor stand, it should stop spamming hi. So now inside of this function, what we want to do is run the detection to make sure that the actual data inside of the inventory matches the recipe. So what I want to do is do execute if block because I want to detect the data of the block and then at the current position because remember this crafter function is being run on the position of all of our custom crafters. And then I want to detect what kind of block it is. So it's a dropper, so it should be a dropper. And now what I want to do is include the NBT data. So I'll put two curly brackets there to detect the actual data. 
But for now, I'll just leave it for as that and then do run say success. And you want to always like check in little amounts to make sure it runs properly. But it should work properly. So, so now let's get the actual NBT to put inside and detect the recipe. So go to mcstacker.com to generate your command because this would be a pain without it. So go to slash set block. And then now what you want to do is set your block to a dropper or whatever you're using for the inventory. And then now you'll see these options for 0 through 8, which are the slots. If you have a chest, you'll have like 27 slots. But what you want to do is basically input your recipe into here and then take the data that it creates here and paste it into your command. So let's say I want the recipe to be a nether star in the middle. Then I'll go to the middle slot, it's slot 4, and then hit edit item and set the item to whatever you want in the middle slot. So I'll put another star. So let's say I want another star and then I want a diamond above it. So that would be slot one because it goes from left to right, top to bottom. So the top left is zero and the bottom right is eight. So now in slot one, I'm going to set a diamond. And remember with this method, you could actually use your custom data. So if you want to do that, you could set your custom tags over here to whatever your custom item is. And remember, if you're doing a custom item, you don't need to input all of the data that your custom item has. You just have to check that the tag actually matches. So let's say you have a gun and the tag is gun colon 1B. Then all you have to do is put the custom tag in there and it should detect it just fine. And now what you'll see is it generates the command block output up here. And what you could do is just grab this NVT. So highlight from dropper all the way to the last curly bracket. Command C to copy it or control C and then just paste that right over here. So now as you'll see, you'll get slot 1B is a diamond and slot 4B is another star. And you could also change the counts if you want to, for example, have your recipe take two diamonds above one nether star, you could also do that. So now if I reload, it should not say success unless it has the proper items in the slots. So I'll get another star and I'll get a diamond and it should be slot four and slot one. And as you can see, as soon as the recipe matches, it hits success. That means our recipe detection is working just fine. And all we did for that was one command. So now that our detection is working with that one command, what we want to do instead of say success is run the function which will replace the items in the dropper with what we want to have in there for the result. So I'm just going to run function and then we're going to have to create a new function. So crafter and I'll just call it recipe one since this is just for the first recipe. So instead of here, I'm going to create a new function called recipe1.mc function. And inside of here, we'll have a data merge command, which will replace the contents of the inventory block. So I'll do data merge and then block. And this will change the data of the block. So and then at the current position, because we're at the crafter right now. And then again, same thing as earlier, we put the two curly brackets because that's where we're going to put our data. So now go back to MC Stacker and do basically the same thing you did for the detection, but now we're going to do the data for the results. So set block and then just change it to whatever block you have, dropper. And then so now let's say I want to craft a netherite block. So if I put this in slot four and put a netherite block, then what I do is just copy this data. Now you don't need the block data, just copy the curly bracket to the other curly bracket. And then now go back in here and paste that data. So now what you'll see is that I have basically the same thing as earlier, but instead of setting a block, I'm merging the data of the block so that it will have another block as its contents. So now if I go back to Minecraft and I reload, what you'll notice is that when I create a successful crafting recipe, oh, then it will actually create a block of netherite. And if you want, we could also add new particles and sounds. So let me just quickly create a play sound command. So So now I'll take that sound and put that inside of our recipe function, which means that the sound will play anytime we create a successful recipe. And you could put basically anything in this function. So if you wanted to do something crazy, like make the crafting table explode when you create a crafting recipe, you could do that too. But now if I reload and I actually create the recipe, it should play the noise. 
And anytime you want to add new recipes to your crafter, just make sure to do the same thing that you did for the detection portion inside of crafter.mt function and create your new recipe function to replace the contents of the inventory block. So here's a quick example using some items from my other data pack. But if I use these rubies, which are custom items, which are actually retextured command blocks, and I put those in there, it forms a ruby block. And as you can see here, in order to detect the custom item, all I have to do is detect the tag which I put onto the custom item when I created it, which in this case is Ruby 1B. So it's really, really simple to detect your custom items. So the item tag is all you need when you're detecting a custom item as part of the recipe, but when you're including a custom item as the result, make sure to include all of the information. So you'll notice that for the recipe portion of it, I didn't have to detect the stuff like the name of the custom item, all I did was the tag. But you'll notice that for the Ruby block, which is the result, I made sure to include all parts of it. So that would be like the name, the custom model data, all of the item frame data and everything like that. Because when you're creating the result of the recipe, you're actually creating the item, not just detecting the item. So to recap what we did, we first created a summon function to create the block and the tagged entity so we could detect our crafter. And then inside of the loop function, we made sure to run a new function for all of our custom crafting tables. And inside of that new function, we had a single command to actually detect the contents to make sure it matches the recipe. And once it detected the recipe, we ran a new function which had a minimum of one new command to actually set the data inside of the block to our new result items.